support your hobby hobby. Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video and it's another Speak Friend and Question. You're here with GBHL James. And GBHL Jamie and we'll get straight into it. We'll get straight into it. We are in my van. It's early in the morning. This is how dedicated we are to our subscribers. Now we're here in my bio van. I've been training people since 6.45. I've been, got, I've been in bed since 6.45. Jamie's been in bed. Really got, uh, me. McDonald's coffees and drinks. You've had your hash browns. And we're going to smash on because we've got a lot of questions. Lots of content to get through today as well. Okay, first question. Um, this is in top comment order because uh, I couldn't change it to date. But first one is from Max M. Hey James and Jamie, thanks again for the great Q&A last week. Yesterday I had my first battle for a very long time. Fantastic. It was a 500 point game, but since I was trying to convince a friend of mine to start with the hobby, T, so Hobbit. Yeah, so see what he did ago. there. See what he did there. It only took 400 points from my side. <laughs> so you, <laughs> is that what you, you did to me in that yeah. goblin bat rep, where you took Maybe, 450? Yeah. Did you take... Yeah, I did. I took like... 450 instead of 500 or something like that? Something, I think it was actually more or less than that. I think it was, yeah, no, about that, because I yeah. mis mispointed the... That's the bat rep which is in two parts if you've not seen it. It's cool. <laughs> uh, as James guessed correctly, he went for the models he liked the most. Thorin, Dwalin, Feely, Keely, Gandalf, and he and uh, Max M had Azog and 12 Hunter Orcs, without any additional war gear, Fimble and Warg, and Gollum. Azog Ooh. went down in round five, Azog the loser. Azog the loser. <laughs> I have to say, the new Golem profile did really well. All in all, he smashed me. Well, you'd expect to with 100 points up. Yeah. 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 But good fun. I hope you had good fun. And great that you're getting your first battle in. And you're introducing someone yep. to the Hobbit hobby. And now he is hooked. He's definitely going to start. I told him to order through Element Games, which hopefully he does. And by the way, do you know how long an order to Germany will take? Not that's long. The, that's the question. About three, three to five oh. days, I reckon. Oh, and now the question of the week. Did you ever play Lord of the Rings, the Ring War game? Lord of the Rings, the Ring War. Did you ever play Lord of the Rings, the, the Ring War game? The one with companies and so on. And if so, how, how did you like it? I'm personally not a fan of it. With companies and so on? Is it a computer game? Do you mean Battle for Middle Earth? If you, did, if you do mean Battle for Middle Earth, I really enjoyed both the games. And their expansions, yeah. I didn't play it. I think the only Lord of the Rings uh, computer game that I played was uh, the mod for Total War. Oh yeah. Third Age Total War. Yeah, that's good. Too easy, but very good. Mm. Very, very, very good. Now, great okay. to hear that you're getting people into the hobby, and try and come over. Yep. Come Next over. one is from Stanners91. Hi guys, excellent Q&A once again. Thanks for answering my question. Can you ally, for example, Joran's Folk Barlin with a warband of Khazad Guard, with Young Dwarlin and a warband of Warriors of Erebor or Grimhammers? Yes! Yeah. What is your opinion on Grimhammers versus Khazad Guard? Thanks as usual for awesome work for the channel and watching every day and learning all the time. Thank you very much, that's what we're here for. And Khazad Guard are better than, than Grim Hammers yep. for the same points. Uh, but if you're doing what you're, if you're suggesting doing, that's a really good combo. So Barling, 12 Khazad Guard, Young Dwarling with 12 Warriors of Erebor with Spear and Shield if you can. Yep. Fantastic. You can yep. see a lot of that. Uh, next question from Mark Johnson. Thanks guys for answering my question last week. I really like the look of the Rivendell Knight in Elrond, but I can't really be bothered painting the horses. <laughs> my question is, how do you guys store your models? I just use a Citadel case. Yep, we do the exact same thing. Just use our cases. Most of mine live on clipboards in my cellar, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah quite a lot of mine are on just shelves in my house, or in an old Tupperware box. Like for broken orcs and things. Yeah, I only, only really use the carry cases for transporting. The arm entertainment next. <clears throat> Arm and hammer. Um, ooh. Oh, he said, yeah, he's put, put a plus one on uh, Frida's question. Element Games don't, don't ship internationally, which you put up a video about a few days ago. Yeah, they, they do ship internationally, um, but Games Workshop have got like a trade... It's not embargo, but you know what I mean? There's like a trade limitation. You, you can't ship uh, Games Workshop goods outside of Europe. So they can... They can do everything anywhere, but they can't do Games Workshop outside of Europe. So if you are, so I think Armin, Armin Armentainment. Yeah, Armentainment, he's from Canada, so you yeah, won't be able to get into uh, Games Workshop. So I'm about an hour and a half away from Mini Wargaming. If I buy from them, does that help you guys in any shape or form? Well, it might do if when you buy from them, you say, listen, tell them in store. You've... Yeah. yeah. Uh, but hasn't their store closed down? Oh, yes, it's their online store. Do they even have an online store anymore? No, I don't. I'm sure they closed the store down, and they had a massive, massive clearance. Yeah. But but speak to him, and if you say, listen, we, you know, uh, we've come, we've come to you guys to buy things because 
you know, we heard that you're partners of the GBHL channel. That, that gets our name out there. That can only be a good thing. Uh, furthermore, I'd be happy to run a few SPG games to represent GBHL over at Mini Wargaming, but I'm not sure if they even have public tables open with their store closing down. Uh, yes, they do have tables, but you need to contact them and you need to say, I'm coming in for a bat rep. And um, what I would recommend that you do is that you, I don't know if you play any other systems, but offer to take down a 40k army and then. While you're playing your game of 40k, just keep mentioning The Hobbit while Matt's talking. <laughs> while he's talking about, you know, when he's doing his overview. Yeah. And keep talking about the GBHL channel. Oh, the GBHL channel, when they do their bat reps, this is what they do. There you go, yeah. Um, and is there anyone in particular I should email, ask for over at Mini Wargaming, James? As he knows you're the one who's particularly active on that website. The one who's particularly active, full stop. <laughs> well, yeah. When do you play football the other day, man? Um... Yeah, just Matt. Just just email Matt at miniwargaming.com if you want to arrange a bat rep with them. And the final question is towards me. Wah! <laughs> Are you currently in a relationship? No. no what? Not. Hang on a minute. Yeah, look at it. Look at it. It says there. Armentainment. Jamie and Armentainment. Mm. Coming together. <laughs> That's a terrible love fight. You can't even see it. Are you in a relationship, Jamie? I am not, no. No, he's just messing a few people around. He's a horrible <laughs> man, really. <laughs> um, oh, great, this video's got it edited. Uh, Danny Parker, 1100. What are you doing? Thank you for answering my question. And first of all, you both have, both have nice facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> facial hair. I don't have any facial hair, do I? Let's have a look. I think it's because last week I hadn't shown. I had like yeah. a bum fluff thing going on. Uh, his question is: In the fight phase, how do you know who hits first? How do you know who, how much damage you've done or taken? And pretty much, I just want to know how to kill goblins. You want to answer that one? I can do no. if you want. Also, where is the tournament? I live in Liverpool. Okay. Oh, then. brilliant! The tournament. James from Liverpool. Hello, I was born in Egbeth. Went to St Michael's in the Hamlet. If you know that area. Very run down. Yeah, it is. We got broken into five times when we lived there. Oh, did you? Yeah, that was a great childhood. Um, you turned out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's dying to swear, but we can't because I'll be editing this video and I had to do it last time. Please don't do it to me. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, the tournament is going to be in Stockport, so it's not too far. It's a stone's throw away from you, really. Tr an quick hour. train journey. Yeah. An hour and 40 minutes or an hour? That's about an hour. Yeah, about an hour. Get yourself over. I need to get your tickets quick because there's an X Wing tournament, and if they start selling out, then our allocation is going to be eaten into. So, <coughs> quick, 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 quick. And how to kill goblins? Oh, What's well, not? He's, he's, was he asking about um, the fight phase? You know, yeah. How do you make sure? How do you hit first? So, you both roll your dice at the same time, and the winner of the fight gets to hit. It's not like in Warhammer where the higher initiative strikes first and then lower initiative strikes. It's just whoever wins the fight. Yeah. Um, and whoever get, basically whoever gets the highest dice roll, and if it's matched, you go by the fight value. And if the fight value is a match, then you do a roll off, and the person who has priority rolls the dice. Yeah. And if you are evil, it's one to three, and if you are good, it's, it's four, to four to six. And if you're both one or the other, you just decide. Just decide. Um, how much damage did, have you done? Uh, you, <clears throat> each attack is worth one wound, so check your strength against their defence, check the wounds chart, roll the dice and see if you match what you need to cause a wound. If one attack causes it, you cause one wound. Except in some circumstances where certain models can cause multiple wounds. And if you are still unsure, go on to our beginner's bat rep. Yeah. Next one is from Jack Zors. Hey guys, love the Q&A videos. Not, no, no, I'm not certain if this has been answered elsewhere, but I've been struggling with it for a while. Fainting. Now everyone says if you support a fainting model with a similar fight value, e.g. Minas Tirith Warriors with Rangers or a Bracken Guards with Serpent Guards, it in essence kills the downside. Well, yes. Yeah. Now I've seen a few bat reps where there have been duels with fainting models, and instead of using two different coloured die, both have been using the same colour. This goes along with the train of thought that if the model in the back has the original fight, then fainting is less dangerous as you retain that higher fight value. When I read the rules, it doesn't seem like that's being followed as it should. Let me give you an example. A ranger with a supporting ranger or dueling an Urukai. The warrior opts to faint because the supporting ranger keeps his fight four. Now when the dice are rolled, they should be differentiated for the I, I, see, I see what you're getting at here. Yeah, I think I think you're thinking <coughs> that individual models, it's which Con individual contribute model? Fight value. The way that, if you read in the fight value rule works, uh, the model with the highest fight value contributes it and all models in that fight use it. So let's say you had Gilgalad fighting 
against the dragon, you know, and there was a bunch of elves in there with him, they'd all count as being fight nine, so all the strikes that were rolled are at fight nine. So that means that you don't have to roll for, you know, oh, Gilgalad's not got a six, so, you know, the, the dragon might win it now. Everyone in that fight counts as being high fight. So that's why we don't differentiate between the two dice when they're rolled when someone at the front is fainting. So I hope that answers your question. Very well answered by both of us, if yeah. I don't mind saying so ourselves. So, yeah. Oh, so I finished watching your back rep, back rep with JT, and my question example is literally at 2710, just so you can see. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've answered that for you. There you go. Next one is from Corby Lux. There. He's got a picture yep. of the, um, the spy from Team Fortress 2. I like that. Um, hey, this is my first question here. So anyway, what is your opinion on Gothmog, the Mordor source book? Thanks for providing interesting content. You're very, very welcome. Gothmog was your one of your most underrated characters, wasn't he? Yes, he was, yeah. Free heroic combat? Uh, oh, sorry, free can counter. You count uh -huh. any heroic action for free within six inches. That's very useful. Yeah, it is useful. And this, he's got three attacks, three wounds, three might, three will, three fate. And he's fight five, which is pretty good for an orc. And I think, actually, if you, if you give him a shield, I think he's defense seven as well. So he's not bad. I've never seen him on the table. No, I know Lewis used him at the one in, Sto in Scotland, the tournament in Scotland. Indeed, yeah. And he came second, so... He must have been doing something right. Gothmog yeah. is great. Mordor source book. It's a very developed source book. It's a lot thicker than some of the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very developed uh, Lots army of lists. troop options for Mordor. They're quite a good list. Probably the most developed list, I reckon. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be up there. Yeah, definitely. Probably the most. Mm. Uh, the Knife in the Dark. I appreciate the mass amount of videos, although I'm not with my models at the moment. In school, it is... Are you watching this in school? Don't, don't, don't. Bloody. Don't get us in trouble. Wait until you get home. Yeah. Uh, it is nice to have something to listen to while I'm doing physics. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Support my hobby physics. at Queen's University in North Carolina. Okay. Focus on, focus on your physics for yeah. now. Not, uh. not us chatting about models. Use these videos for when you're painting models at home, or when you're journeying, you're on the bus journey, you put your headphones in, that's great. But when you're doing your physics, stay focused buddy, it'll be important later on in life. Uh, the Irish Colour Bearable, do you think Radagast is a good hero? If so, why? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold... He's expensive, but he's good. <clears throat> on Slay he's good, I'd say. Yeah, well, he becomes a combat hero on, on Slay, but yeah. in terms of being a... If you look at the list that he's in, because mm -hmm. this is what I was thinking when I played against Kieran the other day, and we ended up doing a scenario last March of the Ants, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, which won't be up by the time this goes up. Yeah. Um, but originally, I was going to do like, some of the new Shadow and Flame Ents, Eagle and Radagast, so he could... because yeah. he couldn't do his Renew. Yeah. So he giving them the wounds back. I think he's very good support in, and... I don't know. Do you like Panic Steed, which is going to be good against... It's going to be, that's good against um, Ring Race on Felbeast. You know, for getting their yeah, world down and stuff, yeah, chucking the, it out. The best thing for Renegast is the fact that he's got an Elven Cloak. He can't mm. just wear an Elven Cloak. That's his big selling point for me. And he doesn't have to be able to see, so he can... Yeah, he can draw a, he can draw a line of sight to anything. Which is really handy, if yeah. you think about it. So he can just he can stay completely hidden, doesn't have to be able to see anything. People can't see him and he can cast on them. Yeah. That's pretty good. I think he's a good hero, and you'll see me using him soon. But yeah. this is a perfect opportunity oh. for this yeah. week's The Scouring of YouTube. The Scouring of YouTube. I just did the little image thing, just in case you wonder what the pause was there for. Okay, well done, everybody who got involved in the last week's Scouring of YouTube. Now, the reason I brought up this week's is because... As I mentioned there, I got to use the new Shadow and Flame Ent. And I think that this week's scan on YouTube, in homage to that, it has to go to Dave Fredericks of Shadow and Flame. Okay, and he sculpted those tree giants and sent them and painted them and they looked amazing. So I'm putting a link up now and this is the video that you guys are going to go and do your scouring of YouTube. Now before we do that, I have a roll call. I have 15 people did this for Mini Wall Gaming last week. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, and those guys are Maz Fanatic, Howdeer88, Jan Yillup, <laughs> Jason Goldstein, or Steen, Peter Sanson, Mason O'Neill, Morgan, Lord of the Rings, SBG, Kurt Leach, Jack Zorazuza, Fudder, WK Valada, The Arm Entertainment, Death Clip, Callum Winfield, and The Dr. Pepper Machine. Dr. Pepper Machine, I like that. Okay, you guys are all winners because you went and you did the scouring of YouTube last week. This week, guys, you're going to go on Dave Frederick's video. And what we're going to do, we're going to make it interesting. I want you guys to, I want you to do sculpts I'd like to see. 
So you're going to go on there, so coming from the GBHO YouTube channel, you can put sculpts I'd like to see, dot dot dot, and you're going to make a suggestion to Dave Fredericks, because who knows, you might be able to make that in the next couple of years. Sculpts you'd like to see on the GBHL. Get on it guys, that is this week's The Scouring of YouTube. The Scouring of YouTube. Good work team. Okay, back on with the questions. We've got the <laughs> Hobbit Wargaming. Hey guys, I love your videos. I'm a huge fan. If possible, I would love to see a siege battle. Any two armies is great. I just want to see an amazing siege. Thanks, guys. You're going to do that at some point. It's on our list of things to do. Next one from Sean Thompson. Hi, guys. Thanks for answering my question. Have any of you made your own terrain? And also, have you ever played a campaign like if a hero dies, it can't come back type of thing? Thanks for the great vids as well, as always. Have you ever made your own terrain? No. Neither have I. It's, 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 what you'll find with, with the, the two of us is that we're probably not as hobby based mm. and we're probably more gamers. Game. Although we, we do enjoy the hobby side of it, yeah. but I don't make terrain. Buy it. Yeah. But Stee is a great uh, terrain maker. Maybe we'll try and get him to do some terrain making videos. Yeah. He's, he made that gorgeous Ammon Saw if you check out those <coughs> old bat reps. Yeah. So. Cool. Next one from Chuchol Master. Chuchol Master! Chuchol! <laughs> That's becoming like a feature <laughs> yeah. in the video itself. Chuchol. When Chuchol Master uh, makes a, leaves a question. <laughs> uh, hi guys, thanks for the answers. And I've got another question. In one of the latest battle reports, Dwarves against Elf, Dwarves seem to be a very tough force. This must be the um, Middle Earth's deadliest one. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. Um, how do I deal with them? What is the best tactic to defeat, to defeat their high defence? As always, cheers from Poland and keep up the good work. Um, do you know what? I've got a really good record against Dwarves with the Rohan. Yeah. Tend to be sort of sm they're smaller force numbers and they don't have spear support until yeah. obviously the, the new lists. Yeah. So quite easy to kind of gang up on and isolate. Yeah. Um, I think if you've got axes, they're always good. Yeah. Especially those pesky axes, doors that get on their own and try and shield. High like strength, <laughs> high defense. Oh, sorry, high strength or you, know, you want high strength or high number of attacks against them. Because the more dice you throw, the more it's going to go down. Which is why your Sons of Ale do so well. Because they're rolling six dice. Yes, they need sixes. But your odds are very high of getting that six with six dice. Yeah. So, yeah. that's what I recommend. Is sort of gang up and use your spear supports and weight of numbers to bear against them. Yeah, weight of numbers. Try and try and trap them if you can. Yeah. Like okay, next question comes from Frank Farmer. Thank you guys for answering. And what is your favourite battle in Middle Earth's history? Keep up the videos. P.S. What are your thoughts on the new Lord of the Rings Hobbit Shadow of Mordor game that's been announced? No idea about that new game. Well, Shadow of Mordor, it, it looks quite cool. Basically what it is is... Um, what kind of game is it? It's a open world role playing game. So like a Skyrim? Yeah, yeah. Like a Skyrim. Um, what it is, the, the lore sounds a bit squiffy. Um, you are a ranger of Arnor, or Dunedain basically, and you have some... I don't know how they... Uh, sort of that made this real but you have some sort of taint and you're becoming a ring wraith so you, you sort of dip in and out and you, you freely mm. walk through Mordor and you, you dip in and out of being sort of a ranger and a wraith and it all seems a bit dodgy for the uh, lore of things but it looks like quite a good game how do you become a wraith? Um, that some good features of the game actually are that um, let's say you are fighting every Bad guy has a name in the game. Mm -hmm. Let's say you fight against one and he manages to escape or you run away. That character doesn't just disappear like in most games. Mm -hmm. as like a faceless orc. He stays in the game and he'll level up and level up and level up. And he will sort of hunt you down, as it were. Oh, really? So, later on in the game, you might recognise that Have same you played orc. this or you just looked no, into I've, it? No, I've looked into it, yeah. You Maybe we could do, and because um, I know that you've done computer game channel stuff in the past. Yeah. And let's uh, play. Maybe we could do like a let's play kind of thing where, I don't know if you've got a feature on your laptop or your computer or whatever you play at, yeah. where you can actually film what you've got on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, yeah. That? Yeah, got that? And then you got could have your mic on, you could talk yeah, while yeah, you're playing it. Yeah. If you would like to see uh, Jamie do like a let's play through um, this new Lord Shut of the Rings game, then that could be an additional bit of content for the site. It's yeah, probably yeah. a game you're going to play anyway, yeah? Yeah, yeah. What was the other part of this question? Um, what is your favourite battle in Middle Earth's history? Too much history. There's so much. That's really hard. Can we just say the Third Age, or from the films, or something? No, that's not. Oh, it's not answering the question, is it? No. Oh, that's a big question because there's so many good battles. Because if you're gonna go from the movie, Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep is very yeah, cool. It has to be Helm's Deep. 
must be. But then again, when when the Rohirrim turn up at Pelennor, that's pretty cool. That charge, that is cool. No, nothing beats Helm's Deep. The, the Urukite Helm's Deep are mean, mean, mean. That's a that's a good army. Um, in the history, if you go back into the first days, there's so much cool stuff. I don't think I could even begin to delve without having the Encyclopedia of Ardu in front of me and say. I like that one, I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll look into it for next week. I'll prompt and ask it again and I'll do a bit of research and I'll yeah. tell you my favourite. Okay, next question. Oh, yeah. Next question from Kurt Leach. Great video and I think the most underrated model is elves. Because I think they should be better at shooting. Like they shouldn't have to take it in the way test and should have more of a chance to hit and wound. You Can't mean under, a... underpowered, does he mean? Yeah, yeah. I think you mean underpowered, don't you? Not undervalued. Can't think of a question, but if I do, I'll post it. So I might get one later on. Do you think elves are underpowered? I don't think they're underpowered. Um, better at shooting? Well, no. They're, they're still the best shooters out there, mm -hmm. in my opinion, anyway. You know, they've got the 24 strength 3, and that's unique to them. Mm -hmm. I still say they're good. Yep. Uh, next question is from Nathan Rishton. Uh, what's your favourite army? Mine is Isengard. Shoot. You, you can say mine, and I'll Rohan! say mine. Rohan! Ooh, tournament winning wood elves! <laughs> Since when do I speak like that? <laughs> I don't know. You, you, you Tournament winning wood elves. Yeah, I'm better. trying to do uh, Ringo Starr doing <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. That's what oh. I think you sound like. Oh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. Go on, do it. Don't say. What, say uh, what? Let's say. Uh, I don't know. Thomas said hello to the fat controller. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to, go on. Thomas said hello to the fat controller. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube it. <laughs> Have a look. Type in Thomas the Tank Engine. Tell me, does Ringo Starr sound like Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. Callum Winfield, next question. I've got a question. Do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favourite game? I do. And at the moment, my favourite game is Awesome Knots. It's a three-player multi-online battle game. Cool. But I, I, I dip and dab into most games. I got a huge, yeah, I got a huge Steam collection. Yeah, you're 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 a gamer. I'm I'm, I'm not so much. I, in my lifetime, there seems to be sort of a game every three years that I might play. So I played Skyrim. It's a mm. great game. Yeah. Uh, before that, it was UFC. UFC, <laughs> UFC 2008 or something like that, because I'm into mixed martial arts, yeah. so I like that. Um, and I, I used to love the Total War series. Yeah, Total War's a great game. Total War series. Total so, War, Rome 2 has been a bit of a letdown though. But they, are, they, are, they are getting there though. I've not even looked at it. <laughs> Don't. Uh, next question is from Adam Castile. Sorry guys, missed last week's Q&A, but thanks for answering my question. Oh, sorry for, bleh, but thanks for answering my legless question so thoroughly last week. Pleasure. Shooting it is, rather than combat that was. Oh yeah, yeah. My question this week is, do you find some of the Desolation of Small models a bit overpowered compared to some of the old Lord, older Lord of the Ring models? I.e. Boromir having three attacks and Toriel potentially having five or six if surrounded. Great rid as always, and nice and long, managed to get my Citadel wood three quarters painted. Picture will be on the GBHL Facebook soon. Fantastic. Great that you're getting loads of painting done while you're watching these videos. Yeah. In terms of, because <clears throat> there is always that danger of stat creep, but I yeah. just think that they've been really creative and thinking of different things, because she's, not, yeah, she's, she's, not, not, she's not, not overpowered. It's a good no. brawl. Um, I wouldn't say in one or two models that you might find evidence of a stat creep, but that's just going to happen. I think in most games, like you reduce a model and then maybe it does need changing a little bit. I think it happens but less with with much, our much, system, much less with Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. It's not so much the kind of game where it's like right, okay, we're going to bring out this completely invented this completely inve invented unit like you might get in Warhammer or yeah, yeah. yeah 40k. And that needs to sell, so we're going to change the meta of the game so everybody has to go and buy this. Yeah. People are into Middle Earth for different reasons. Mm. You know, you, you buy elves because you like the look of elves and you like yeah. the fluff of elves. You buy, you know, Kazard because you like the look of Kazard and yeah. Hobbits because of that. You know, that's really should be your motivation. So any force can do well. Yeah, and I would I would take Boromir like that like beefy Boromir. Yeah, Captain in the White Tower over Toriel yeah. all day long. What a beast! I've never played with him, and I can't wait. Oh, he is good. He's fun to play with. Six might's great to have stored up. Just I bet he's just fun. It's like, way, Boromir! <laughs> Boom! Lance <laughs> everything. I bet he's so much fun. Yeah. I enjoy Boromir Gondor as well. Just having six might and being like, come on, Sean Bean. Does the horn work Don't quite yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. Does it work quite awesome. well? Um, I guess it gets evil. I guess evil when they've not got fury. Yeah, fury is a... fury is now sort of like an auto-include for evil that it's become a little bit negated, but it's still good to have. Uh, next, next, question. next question, George Harold. Great video again, guys. What army factions and specific models do you expect to be prevalent at the desolation of Stockport? Also, will opponents be selected randomly or not? 
Do you want to answer that last part? I'll answer that last part. The last part is going to be uh, Swiss seeding. So you should. The first two games will be pretty random. And then after that point, it starts to seed. So you should be playing people that are the same sort of skill level as you and doing that as well in the tournament. So basically, if you, if you win your first game, then you're likely to play against someone who won their last game. Yeah. And if you lost your first game, vice versa. So that's yeah. how it should build up. It's going to be great. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. This is already set to be the biggest indie tournament of, ever. Yeah. For, for Lord of the Rings. Be, for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Ever. <laughs> In terms of armies, I think that we're going to see. I think we're going to see a lot of the new deaths. I, I think we're going to see tons of Mirkwood Rangers because I think people People love like them. them, yeah. People love them. I think we're going to see loads of Mirkwood Rangers. Uh, yeah, that, that's yeah. what I think we'll see a lot of. Local Rangers, and um, what else might there be? So a little hint, if you're evil, Time of the Shadow Lord might be back. Yeah. Let's see some nice Kyrdans and Galadriels and things that can yeah. cast it's blinding light. It's going to be one force, so yeah. I, I'd include it, because yeah. blinding light it's, it's yeah. always good too. <clears throat> Next question, who else but Haldir? And it's not Haldir 88. It's, it's not. It's who else but held there. Oh, who I knew, else? I knew oh! I'd get you with that one. Just tricky, tricksy, tricksy. Sorry, who else is held there? I thought it was held there. Who, who else but held <laughs> Who else but held there? Who else but held there? Hi guys. Hopefully you recognise me from the One Ring. Anyway, do you? Well, I don't recognise you. Haldir. Username. Um, I probably will know you from the One Ring. Anyway, here are my questions. First question: What are your guys' thoughts on artillery and ballistas in SBG? No idea. A uh, bit of a point sink. Um, evil ones are alright because you can still keep shooting once the lines have met but good's got that rule restriction where you can't risk hurting your own models and after a couple of turns you can very quickly sort I'm of guessing as well with things like deployment potentially being so close and if you roll a 1 to set that warband up they've got to set up 12 inches away and most of them have sorry the McDonald's is catching up with me <laughs> um, have like a sort of a minimum shoot value of about 18 inches or so and it's like well and with things like Heroic March and... Yeah, you get there so quick. Good in a siege, though. You need him in a siege, really. Um, well, we'll do a siege for you at some point soon. Secondly, what do you guys think of Rohan Infantry and Helmlingus? I was thinking of allying in, allying in a warband of Helmlingus with my Wood Elf army. I think the Strength 4 would really help crack heavy armour. Keep up the good work. Go on, you can take well, it. Well, Strength 4 is a plus. However, with the new Special Strikes, this is my theory, and tell me yeah. if you agree. Because they're... They're dirt cheap. Yeah. They're... they're, they're, they're Goods horde potentially yeah. aren't they? they? They can be goods horde. Um, so just if you can model them with axes. Yeah, just pick the ones with axes. Out here, and that's free. And then if you piercing strike every time without a shield, your defence four. Mm. You know, so you're not losing it's too much. Like six point standard. Six point standard, yeah. Yeah. Six points, you can get a ton of these guys. Yeah. And I've thought about that as well. If you then go and if you put something that can give the fight five. Yeah. Behind. You've got a very 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 cheap high strength yeah. screen effectively. Because if they die, and they to die. Yeah, and m most um, even models we wounded them on a five plus. Yeah, but so I think um, Constantine this might, might be him. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. I think Constantine on was it Constantine? No, Galanur, um from Portugal on the One Ring. He was trying. He was playing about with some Rohan infantry armies, mm. and I had a few ideas. He was trying to mix up the cavalry. I said, "Why don't you try this?" And I think I did a five hundred point. It really was a horde army, like Rohan army. I said, just model with axes, don't take Helmingus. Yeah. So then you don't need, because Grimbold's not great, is he really? He's not great, no. Apart, he's got two might. He's, he's not great. He fight four. Yeah. Not yeah, good. Yeah. He's the only Rohan warrior at all with the two axe though. That's true. That's, that, that, that's his selling point. <laughs> not worth it. Um, and I think it was something like 40 odd models. Uh, 500 points, yeah. 500 good. points. Uh, next question here is from Kieran Flynn. Hey guys, Kieran here. First up, what are your ch first up? You are champions of my beloved system. Thank you for all you're doing to promote Lord of the Rings. Ooh. Ooh, champions. Uh, second, themed forces are always my favourite opposition. If coin was not an issue, what would your dream themed army be? I've got mine. I made mine. Mine was the all cavalry Rohan. Rohan. I made it, and I think all of you should go out there and do that. Money wasn't an issue. Maybe he's, is he asking my, if money wasn't an issue, yeah, like, as if like you actually made the army itself, or no, no, he's asking if you could just, oh, just, just buy anything, buy anything, yeah. Rohan, all mounted. Did I mention that? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Loads of sons of ale. I think for me it would be. I'd, I'd like to see the army expand a bit more, but more fiefdom forces. 
Yeah, I'd love to see Dolamo, the real good Dolamo Force. I, I, I want to see the, um, what are they called, the Clansmen of Lamberdon. I, I love that sort of idea, they're just like sort of Scottish Highlanders basically. Yeah, pretty much aren't they? They are, yeah. They Top. look great though. Um, oh, good. Steve's got quite a few. We'll try and get him yeah. to do a fiefdom butt wrap on here because yeah. they're painted and they're painted gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, next question is from Matt Hill. Thanks for answering my question, guys. I used two eagles today in a thousand point game. Both of them, both of them served me proudly. As one finished off the Goblin King by hurling a goblin, and the other ate the Drumlake Ringwraith. That's, That's good. That's they've done well then. <laughs> yeah. Just wondering, what do you think about thousand point butt wraps? Cheers again. I like them. I like having bigger heroes, more troops, and there's a bit more flexibility in what you can do. And I've only ever played. <clears throat> one game at a thousand points yeah. and it took eight hours <laughs> I was just learning <laughs> it put me off for a long yeah. time Games Workshops events are one thousand points so yeah. how long do they expect for you uh, to two and a half hours <sighs> that's plenty of time mate two and a half hours mind you I'm so a, bit, say, a bit quicker now yeah so, so, I felt two and a half hours was a bit long some of the games I played in finished was about, about an hour and a half in and then I've got like an hour Plus you the, just play like another game and just have a bit of fun with them. Plus the 20 minute break. I'm not really normally I want another game. Like, yeah. Usually it's like on a Sunday morning after you've been hung over you're like, oh okay, mm. this hour is spent for sleeping. <clears throat> Next question. <clears throat> it's from One Good Riddance. Thanks for answering my question. This week's question concerns the custom scenario of April's tourney. According to the rules, you score three victory points having more models with their bases partially within three inches of the objective than your opponent has. I think an emendation is needed to account for the eventuality that a model space may be completely within three inches of the objective, hence including the latter models in the count. I also have two suggestions. Have you considered returning to the two-part battle report format? It generates more pews, more pews, more views per single battle report and an amount of invested time. And have you thought of using a standard on-screen display in the battles, something similar to what Mini Wargaming does, which would show the VPs earned so far, perhaps points, models needed to breach breaking point, etc, etc. It adds an additional visual appeal. Okay, so let's start off with the first part of that. First question, um, I think... Uh, the is the custom scenario. Yeah, well, if your base is within that three inches, uh, the, the reason I've, I've put there saying partially within three inches is that if you're fully within it, you still get the points of that model being there, mm. but partially allows sort of, you know, to check. You, you, can, you can potentially score more, basically. Yeah. It makes the game a bit more fair, because... You could go sit and a mummock space on that three inches and go, well, no one else is going to get in here now. Yeah. Whereas if you can push that mummock off and partially get you know two models in that sort of little corner of the circle, then you can beat the mummock. And it, this isn't a custom scenario that we've made up. This is one that's been tried and tested. Tried and tested. It was at the Scotland uh, Scouring of Stirlingshire, and it worked really well there. So that's why I thought, well, I really like playing that scenario. It was a good, different thing from the books. So I'm going to use it. Fantastic. So, yeah. The second part was that about uh, two, part two parts. Rep. We didn't. <clears throat> what happens is the first part one of the bat rep gets a really high amount of views, and part two just doesn't mm. because I, I, I think it's just it's a, bit, it's a bit it's more effort required from our users to go find the second video, even if we link it. The click through rate isn't high. So, it's, it's not performed as well as yeah. the battle reports have been in one go. But so I think people just for convenience and ease just want that one battle report in a video, watch it all, next video. Mm. See, I, I mean, I, I like the idea of it at first, but then the, it, I, I didn't even enjoy watching that as much as I thought yeah. that I would because it was it was a fun it was, yeah, it's a fun, fun it was a fun game, but I didn't enjoy watching it as much as I have the others yeah. either. Plus, if someone finds part two first and just jumps straight into it they're not going to get sort of the flavour that was in the first video. And I understand what you mean about um, sort of amount of invested time because you, you're basically getting two videos out of your one um, yeah. one set of filming, but then you're having to edit those two separately, you're having to render them separately, and you're having to upload them separately. Yeah. <laughs> and uploading takes forever. Yeah. And, and it won't work strictly like, okay, it's, yeah, but it's still amount, the same amount of time. It's not, it, it yeah. really wouldn't be. You should just be in a real pain at the moment for everything we do. Mm. And in terms of having sort of floating bits, now it does take more editing. I think it's something we'll do in the future. Yeah. But at the moment, you know, we're both working off different, so it's, it's hard to get any kind of consistency between yeah. anything that we do. So. We're, we're both working off different video editors. He's on a MacBook, I'm a PC. <laughs> yeah, we like that. Oh, yeah. I love that advert. <laughs> okay, great. And I'm glad to be the Mac. I'm glad to be the PC. Yeah. Numbers! Like, Numbers! <laughs> <laughs> Pages! <laughs> Words. <laughs> Uh, Letters. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
Except for what it says uh, on the so, uh, Potentially, we will do more sort of visual stuff like that. We, we did it quite a lot for our first few videos. Yeah. But we found that it just, the editing time takes so much longer and we want to get the daily content out. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's down to you guys what you want, really. Would you rather have a video a day, like pretty much guaranteed, which is what we've been doing, or would you rather have a couple of it, like less videos, but you've got notes and stuff on the bottom and scores yeah. flashing up and images and stuff like that? I mean, yeah. that takes a lot longer and there's less return of videos. Yeah. And I think we're finding at the moment, from a subscriber point of view, what we're doing is clearly working. Yeah. But we do appreciate the suggestions, and we can always look at it again in the future. What's next? So, uh, VK WK Valada, Mirkwood Royal Guard photo bomb the video at eleven fifty three. <laughs> nice seeing you guys get some cameos. I didn't uh, get that. I, I read that, but what does he mean, photo bomb? Photo bomb is where you just like, well, it, if if I was to photo bomb, let's see. You, you, you basically run behind someone and take a stupid looking Oh, right, camera. okay. Uh, I'm not down with the kids. I've got no idea what a photo bomb is. <laughs> I've tried to load the video. I've tried to load the video at that point, and an error has occurred on my phone. Oh, just go back to the Q&A. just go back to the Q&A yeah. questions. We'll try and have a look when we get back, but we've got no idea. Uh, adding a question, I just wanted to... I just watched your review of the movie. I see a lot of the flaws in the same way. Do you think that PJ and his team made Smog too late in order to make him clumsy? Question mark. I hated seeing him with two legs, and when they began to fight him, I kept thinking he wouldn't be flopping around if he had four legs. What do you think? Would those scenes be, be would those scenes be possible with a four-legged dragon? I'm not sure whether that's why, why they made the changes. No, I, I quite like the dragon with four four arms, despite you know it, it being completely sort of anatomically almost impossible. Is it, uh, it makes it more possible, doesn't it? No idea. I think there's no six leg, six limbed animal that has four legs and two wings in <clears throat> our world. No, is there not? But there is creatures that have two legs and the batty wings sort yeah. of thing, or bats, basically. I thought one of the great things about the movie was how great the, the dragon looked. Just how it ended up acting when it, they did that stupid chase. That was the disappointing bit. Yeah. Not the dra how the dragon looked. The dragon looked cool. Sorry, the smell looks awesome. The smell was awesome. Uh, Steve? Steve, Steve says, says, Oi, I'm from Long Sight, although I got out as soon as I could. Cheeky bar steward. <laughs> I think he's saying that because we said, yeah, don't walk from Manchester to Stockport because it's a long, long walk and you've got to walk through some dodgy areas. <laughs> yeah, Steve, that explains a lot. <laughs> You're from Long Sight, that explains a lot. First first time I was looking to move back to Manchester, I was looking for a place in Long Sight. And I was, but I, I didn't really know Manchester that well. So anyway, and it was cheap, and I was expecting in my mind to be paying the same as what I paid before. So anyway, looking at these houses, and I said to the lady after she showed me, I said, oh, what's the area like? Yeah, she said, yeah, it's fine, it's really nice. So I went to the bus stop to go back to the train station. I stood there at the bus stop, car goes past. Now, I'd, I'd been in Iraq, like, not that long before, really. Like, maybe a year yeah. before, a year and a half before. Somebody wound down the window, leant out, and went, bang! <laughs> and scared the absolute innards out of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I jumped out of my skin. It happened twice. Twice different car, yeah. so yeah, long sight. Steve, that better not be a new pal. <laughs> no, in fact, no, <laughs> wrong, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wrong uh, background. Next question <laughs> is from Jonathan Punchen Origami Chicken, thanks for answering my question, guys. Oh, is, is this Origami Chicken from the forums? Right, thanks. For, I was a bit confused then. Uh, my next question is, how would you get your local club to start playing The Hobbit? We mainly play War Machine and Malifaux, and the only one who, who wants to play The Hobbit, really, any help would be appreciated. Suggestion number one, uh, look at the games that they're playing and maybe pick up like a Malifaux starter box, yeah. they're not that expensive, or one or the other, and play their games, play their games with them, and then talk about how superior the Hobbit, is. The Hobbit hobby is. Other things to do might be to provide them with, so if you bought the Beginners set, paint them up and let them play with them, and let them be Thorin's company. Yeah, and let them win. And let them win. Let them win. Um, another thing that you might be able to do in the future <laughs> that we might be able to help you with, and really... I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this, something we want to do going forward, but one way that we want to entice people into trying Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit strategy battle game is to actually cover some other systems, yeah. you know, and sort of show those games, and, you know, that might direct them to this channel, and then they get to see the Hobbit battle, battle reports and think, wow, yeah. this is a great game. Mm. I had my first game of X-Wing yesterday. Did you? It's good, yeah, isn't it? It's very good. It's good. <laughs> Although I felt the, um, the X-Wing is really sort of... Did it win? No. 
Well, the X-Wing didn't win. No. Did you, what did you play as? I played as the X-Wing and then the TIE Fighters. Oh. Yeah. Well, the TIE Fighters are sort of... In, in the quick start rules, it seems the TIE Fighters have a major advantage, in my opinion. What, what did you... What did you upgrade your... Did you put R2-D2 with Luke Skywalker? Oh, you don't use any upgrades, do you? Do you not use any upgrades? No, in the quick start rules it says just use this, this and this. Alright, you can do that if you want, but then if you want to play like a man, <laughs> you know, what you start doing is your upgrades and your pilot cards yeah. and stuff like that. Because it's the good pilots which are, you know, yeah. your Wedge Antilles and your, and your Luke Skywalker. And I got my tie, a tie advance the other day, looking forward to using Darth Vader. Guys, if you'd like to see an X-Wing battle report, comment below and we can, because uh, it's very easy to, to play. Very good yeah. fun. Okay, next one. It's from Awara 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 Awful. Sorry guys, I didn't post a question last week. I was busy catching up with homework in school, and trust me, there is lots as its final year of school. Oh, good luck. Anyway, to make up for it, I have two questions. Firstly, if you play Orcs, how can you defeat an army of... An army of army of the undead warriors? And could you guys play some of the scenarios in the Desolation of Smog book? Army of the undead are going to be tough to beat with Orcs. I'm, I'm... I guess that's because they strike the courage. They strike the courage. And the courage and the fact... too. And the courage too. So they're wounded on fours. And the fact they defence eight and the equal fight by equal fight by is gonna make it very tough. And that they cause terror. So so number one, get Fury that's channeled to help prevent some of those wounds and to let you charge. Number two Surely axes. it's gonna be about what else you bring as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean if you're gonna do just Orcs versus Army of the Dead then I probably would definitely put it towards Army of the Dead. Oh yeah. Um and we should be getting some Destination of Smog books uh, scenarios done today. The actual point scenarios, not the... Yep, we're going to gonna do them. Next one. Um, Masic Mac? Machaic Mac? Machik Mac! Machik Mac! That's what we're going to call you until you tell us otherwise. <laughs> Hi, first time commenting, I'm coming back to the hobby after three years of break, and your channel inspired me to once again start collecting Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit minis. That's phenomenal news. My question is, is Aristor worth taking in a 500 point army with the twins, or better to use the twins and a high elf captain? Thanks for the answer, keep up the great work. Aristor's good. Aristor is good. He's still like a mini Hasharin. Mm-hmm. Two attacks that he rerolls wounds for, daggers that he rerolls wounds for, for throwing daggers. Aristor's good at 500 points, because one of the cheaper... Elven heroes. Yeah. He's got three fate as well. He's only got the one might point, but especially if you're spending the money on the twin. I know. I know that when you break them in half, they're obviously great value. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They are great value. You're effectively getting two very, very good heroes. First Seventy points or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, th I think Aristor. Yeah, Aristor be good. <clears throat> Go for it. Let us know how you get on. Yeah. Next one from Morgan, Lord of the Rings, SBG. Hey guys, great video. This week's question is, do you think Glorfindel Mounted and 12 Gladrim Knights could take on Eomir and 8 Sons of Aeol? And do you think Gladrim is a good army? Do you say Glorfindel? Glorfindel can't lead 12 Gladrim Knights, can he? No, he can't. But if he was. But if he was. Well, Glor <laughs> what's it? Versus Aeol? Uh, Aeomir. Or oh, Aeomir Knight of the Pelennor? It just says, says Aeomir. Aeomir and that's, that's 8 just... Sons of Aeol. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd win. Glorfindel's a beast. Mm. Glorfindel'd be doing a lot of damage himself, wouldn't he? Yeah, we'll go with Fight 7, and the fact you've got the outnumbering. Yeah, Fight 7, outnumbering, high well, fight well, value, there's lances. No, there's, there's, no, there's no lances in Gladrim Knights. Well, these are Gladrim. These are tw 12 inch movements, armoured horses. But no lances. No lances. But bows and blades and shields. And I'm sure if having 4 extra is a big bonus. Big they're, they're especially the four... those, what we're finding as well when we do the Middle Earth Steadiest War Bands, those, there, that no makes a difference. There's no room for error. If, if you can gang up on a model, and which you will him. be able to at that, yeah. and you kill them, then yeah. I, my money would be on, on the Glorfindel and the Elves. Okay, next one is from Kankras the Orc. I'm doing a Goblin Army, and I have the Escape from Goblin Town mini. Oh, I have Escape from Goblin Town, Mines of Moria, and three Moria Goblin Commanders. What would you add? Is a Warg Marauder a good idea? Yes, Warg Marauders are awesome. And what else would I add? Troops, Black Shields. Regular spammy goblins. From the great goblin himself. Uh, next question from Jeremy Smith. First age of Smith here. Cheers, and here is your thumbs up, I owe you. Thank oh, you. yeah. <laughs> you didn't give us a thumbs up last time. That's what it's about. I'm glad that we answered your query appropriately. The Thanks for the thumbs up. The, uh, the semicot is in the mail, or is it the post? <laughs> My question is... <laughs> 
How can I get my wife more involved? More involved in what? <laughs> she hates the hurl special attack rules. Well, anyone would hate being hurled. Yeah. Uh, we paint and craft plenty, so I do let her win. So do I let her win? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Best way to get her involved, yeah, let her win. Oh, God, you're so good at this. You are so good. And when you tell a woman that they're good, they become good. You know what I mean? Uh, next one you're is so from... good. Four Ladius, four. Best ever. This is disgusting. Hope you're editing it, this. Um, no, I'm talking about wargaming. Yeah, sure you are. These videos are great to paint models to. My question, when basing models, what is your preferred method? And can I use builder sand, or do I need modelling sand? Well, there is no such thing as modelling sand. It's just sand. Mm. Yeah, don't be conned. It's yeah. like 20 quid for... Don't, don't, don't go to the games workshop and buy like a, uh, the sand tubs they've got there. That they are very, very pricey for sand. Jamie's got a new favourite basing technique. you got one of the... Uh, I've got, I got, I got the technical paint. The so lazy. <laughs> yeah, literally. It does look alright, though. You, you spray the model... And then at the end of it, you just slap some of this agrella and earth on the base. It dries, cracks, and you stick a graft tuft, a tuft there, on it. And jobs are good. Tournament ready to go. <laughs> Done. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a new technique for basing, which I love, and it works. Mm. My bases look good now, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, <clears throat> I've got like a... It's not modelling sand, obviously. It's just kind of just, gravelly sand. Yeah, yeah. But it's got bigger lumps in it, so you put PVA glue on, mm. dunk it in... Then you prime your model once that's dried, make yeah. sure you let it dry overnight first. Then you prime your model, then I get the um, Rhinox hide, paint that over it. Yep. Then once that's dried, I dry brush Mournfang Brown. Yep. And then once that's dried, I go over and slightly bigger rocks I do in Administrum Grey, whatever it's called. Yep. And then once that's dried, dry <laughs> brush uh, Ushabti Bone. Yep. And then that looks great. And then you can put a little bit of glue around and dip, dip sprinkle some... Flock. Yeah, sprinkle some flock, the static grass, yeah. and then give it a rub and that comes up, and then put a tuft on if it's an important model, yeah. and it looks sweet. Or then paint your rim in the lighter brown. Yeah, yeah. Next question from Haldir88. Hey guys, great vid. I'm always looking forward to the Q&A because that's when I'm painting most. My question for this week is about the Great Beast of Gorgoroth. I know there is a model of it, but does the beast also exist in the books? And all those stats for the beast? If yes, are they good? Thank you for answering my questions. Every work. I know the answer to this. Yep. Uh, and the Battle of the Pelennor, Tolkien mentions great beasts. And this gave license to um, PJ and co to design oh, these great I mean, I, beasts. I, I thought he mentioned the source books. So I was like, oh, like, thinking, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. In the actual books, yeah, in the yeah. actual books. No, great beasts of Gorgrafan, but great beasts and war engines are mentioned in the Battle yeah. of Pelennor. So, you know, uh, PJ and co, they were like, well, where a workshop? They're like, what do these great beasts look like? Let's go to town. That's rhinos. What kind of, they look like Big giant rhinos. rhinos. Um, dinosaurs. They do, they look like a dinosaur yeah. that used to exist. Yeah. Uh, if yes, are they good? And do they have stats? Um, yes, they've got stats. Which makes me think that which is why they might actually be in the <laughs> <laughs> You can just chat on about the books if you want. Um, and are they good? I don't rate them that well, to be honest. But um, other people do. I'll never come up against them. I'm guessing they're like a mini Moomak. A mini Moomak, yeah. We had this discussion in another video where I got the rules wrong for them. Yeah, so that's why you're staying <laughs> that's clear. That's why you're staying clear. <laughs> hands off, hands off. You get a lot of rules wrong, don't you? Not really. You're singing songs around corners. Yeah, well. <laughs> right. That's right, six um, dice are Yeah. <laughs> 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 On the floor, six dice. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> um, next question is from Frida. Hello again, guys. Thanks for answering all my questions from last week. A few more. One, tried ordering from Element Games, but they only ship to the UK. What can us international people do to support you guys? We've answered that in a previous question. You can support us by just watching our videos, liking, okay. sharing, subscribing, getting involved in these Q&As. And, yeah, if it's Games Workshop products you're after and you're outside of Europe, you won't be able to buy them from Element Games. But if you ever decide you want to get anything else, any hobby supplies or anything at all, or another system, go to Element Games, they'll sort you out. Two, I found that sometimes a game can take very long. My last one was 500 points of hold ground, and it took about three and a half hours. Any tips on how to finish games faster? Don't play with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my game post. All right, Midler Studies Warband is 13 models. We played that dwarf and elf game. It must have taken about two and a half hours to play. And to do with the camera, the filming. Well, that, 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 that comes into it, but not an extra like hour and a half worth. No. 
you know what? The best way to get quicker at games is to play more. Play them, learn the rules. I'm a lot quicker now than when we started. We did, much, right? much quicker, yeah. Did, uh, five, did 500 points way before. before yeah. A couple of my first 500 point games, you're talking about five or six hours. Seriously. Um, but it should, it should take you about an hour and a half, two hours. And then if you're filming, that's three hours. Yeah. Three and a half. We're going to try and do four today. Two hours per bat rep. Uh, you asked me how my first games went, they were quite fun. Played with Dwalin, Barlin and Gimli, leading Warriors of Erebor, Grimhammers and Khazad Guards. Dwalin and Gimli underperformed and Barlin fluffed all his priority rerolls. And I ended up getting destroyed in Lords of Battle by Shelob, Warg Riders and Moran and Orcs. Unlucky. That is unlucky. Yeah. I expect you to win that. For my next two games I used a Troll Chief and Troll with Orcs, and a Troll Chief with Witch King respectively. Both games, the Troll Chief was a beast, hurling models and spear lines, calling heroic combats with his might and rending against heroes. Witch King worked well too, and I am very much looking forward to using him again, this time with more will. So what's he bought? Troll Chief. Yeah. Sounds like good fun. <clears throat> yeah. Troll good. Chief is a beast. Uh, next question from Thomas Macklin. Great video as always, chaps. Thank you. And thank you for your answer. There will be soon to be more cavalry added to my collection. My question this week is about Boromir. In his Gondorian armour with shield, he's 180 points. Is he worth it? I think he is. Just wanted your opinion. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Make sure he's on horse with a lance, but definitely. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a bit of one that... I mean, because you would normally say with a, a hero that's that many points, you'd say, well, 500 points... You know, tough, you want to include in a bigger points game. But one of the good things about the Gondor list, you've got options to have really cheap heroes. So you yeah, can get yeah, in... Damrod and Denethor and... Baragond. Baragond. Very, very cheap heroes. So <clears throat> you can have that beefy hero in there, which is great fun, and then cheaper heroes. The next question from Firefox1066. Thanks for answering my questions again last week. I really like the look of James's Aomir as well. I've never seen Jamie's Fellowship, so I can't comment on them. They're at home. I've not got them with me. What are your predictions for the new Dane? Do you think his stats will be the same as the old Dane profile? And also, do you expect that we will see new heavily armoured models of Thorin's Dwarves towards the end of the year? Thanks. It depends on... Because there, there are rumours that he's going to come in riding a, riding a pig. Yeah. I reckon we'll see a young Dane with potentially like fight 6-7 maybe. Potentially. Fight 6. He's got to be at least fight 6, I reckon. Yeah, well, yeah he won't be fight 5. Fight 5 because he's, he's that old in the Lord of the Rings that he's fight five because he's a bit, a bit, a bit weak. Yeah. I expect it to be like fight six at least, strength four. Yeah, fight defense, six, strength, strength nine, four. still. Maybe defense eight because he might not be. Oh look, it's the Element Games guys. Oh, hello. Let's give him a wave. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Q and A. <laughs> um, heavily armored Thorin's dwarves. Yeah. Hmm? Heavily armored Thorin's dwarves. Heavily armoured Thorin's dwarves. Yeah, so like the Thorin's company, but in heavy armour. Yeah. Yeah, I, rec I reckon we, it'd be a mistake not to. But then they didn't do ponies yet, so... No, I think they're holding out, waiting to sell more of the limited edition set, sets. Yeah. If you've not if you, if you've not got into the game yet, go out there and buy that set and support your Hobbit hobby. Yeah. Get it from Element Games, if you're in Europe. Uh, next question is from Khalid Mubarak. Mubarak. Uh, I'm just getting into Lord of the Rings and I'm starting with Rohan and making a typical Rohan list of cavalry and Helmlingas. It's 500 points with Eowyn as the Force Commander, 6 riders of Rohan with throwing spear and 4 outriders on horse and Warband 2 is Grimbold and 10 Helmlingas. Eowyn's group is more of a ranged harassing unit than combat but will engage after reducing their target to favourable numbers. My question is more of an opinion than anything else. The next I'm I'm going to get will be Legolas and Toriel with 10 Mughal Rangers each for purely shooting force. So my opinion on your Rohan force, you've got very limited numbers there and no no real sort of punch. Punch. Because Eowyn's not going to give you a punch, he's more of a mic caddy. And then was it a captain? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Grimbold. Grimbold. And Grimbold isn't a, a great hero apart from the Helmingus upgrade. And as, all, as we've already discussed, yep. with special strikes, get them with axes, and you're effectively getting that for free. Not too much of a risk. Who is making this racket outside? Do they, do they not understand the importance? Someone's mm. getting rid of a skip. This is our speak friendly question. Um, so you've got a very, I mean, put it this way, my all cavalry force is more models than you, and has got Sons of Ale, you know, it's got Aeon and the Pelinor. So you like, look, I'm going to tell you straight, mate. I'm telling you straight, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I've uh, got more models than you. Aeon as a force leader. I would, no. No, she's one wound, I'm pretty sure face. that you agree with me. Yeah. Aeon, someone actually commented saying, um, it was Mark Johnson, said, ew, yuck, don't use Aeon as, as a commander, sorry. 
Yeah, not being negative at all, because um, obviously you've got to you've got to learn what you're doing. But the Aon should, is more of a support hero. Yeah. You can put her and then maybe an AMR or a, a more. Well, no, I, can, I can't believe that Aon. Sorry, sorry, I can't believe that Aon six riders and four outriders. Helm, ten Helmingus and. They got throwing spears. So if you've got riders, that's thirteen plus a throwing spear on each one makes them fifteen points. So times that by six is sixty ninety. Eowyn's probably about 46, 46 yeah, so 136. Grimbold's, what, 45? Is it four outriders as well? Four outriders. I four outriders is 52. Is it four outriders, 13, 26? Yep, yeah, 52. So, so 188 one eight eight at the moment. Grimbold's about 50, 45? Uh, Grimbold is 50 or 55. One eight eight, one three, one four, and 10 Hill Mingus will be... 90 points or so. Seven. So you're only on about 250 there. That's why you've got more models. So I think the question is, what do you reckon should be added next? Ah, uh, is that the question? My question more an opinion than anything else. So next, I'm going with... I might get Legless with Antorio with 10 medical ranges each, purely for a shooting force. Are you sure you mean 500 points? Do you mean 250 points? 250 doesn't seem like such a bad force. No, 250 sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> 500 points, maybe not. But let us know in next yeah. week's Speak Friend and Question. Okay, next one is from Deathclip. What's his uh, What's his real name? John. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> hey guys, Jamie's oh. starting to care. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I was late in the previous week's Speak Friend and Question, so here's my question. I recently found twelve cheap Riders of Rohan and two Sons of Ale with Urken brand. So this encouraged me to start an all mounted Rohan list. Crowd cheers in brackets. Woo! <laughs> so my question is, what would you suggest I get in order to build a 500 point army without spending too much money? I definitely want AOM Knight of the Pelinor and Four Sons of Ale in there. As always, fantastic videos guys, I'm looking forward to the next one. Keep up the good work and see you in April. You could do the James build if you want to. Mm. It's up to you what you, want, what you want your army to be like, because if you want it to be more combat-y then yeah. Sons of Ale. P.S. Jamie don't tell James, but I still like my Wood Elves more. Ah. Yeah. Oh, but isn't it nice that he's got two armies that basically channel armies? You've got yeah. a Jamie army and a James army. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I think that you'll prefer Rohan no. after you've played them a few times. I don't. It takes a real tactical genius to master yeah. all cavalry Rohan. Yeah, sure. Next question is from Zach Elkins. I actually live in Kentucky, USA, and I've just found a gaming store not far away. Fantastic. The owner loves painting and playing Lord of the Rings SVG. Hopefully I can get down next weekend and get started. Another one of my, my mates collects the models as well, but doesn't have very many. Just some Marokai Scouts and Dwarf Rangers. So good to see that you've got some friends who can start playing with you. That's really good. Exactly. Good luck with your start. Clint Whitney, greetings from Chicago. Yeah, Hello. all these all these US people. Um, Our US subscribership, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, has gone up massively. Yes, yeah. Massively. As we'd expect to. They're just the... Big in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because just the size of the states compared to UK we've got a very small dense population they've got just a massive massive population true but there's lots of war gamers in the UK yeah still got more UK um, subscribers no we haven't we have we haven't yeah we've got we've got more 140 in the US 188 in the we've got well our international subscribership is so much higher than our UK but our UK consists most of the views I think last time I checked 42% of our views come from the UK uh, most of our subscribers come from abroad, but most of our views are UK based. True, but we've still got more still got subscribers more. in the UK than okay. the US. Jesus. You'd be devastated if you've got this wrong, because there's nothing more fun than going into the analytics and having a little look at where it was from. It's great. It's really good. And more female subscribers now as well? 10%. This is why Arm Entertainment is asking yeah, if you're. I know that you're a dude, though. <laughs> but maybe, you know, might like you. Well, I wouldn't blame him. It's uh, a beard. It is. Oh. Uh, so great from Chicago, I need some advice building a Gondor force. My first host is Boromir of the White Tower and Six Knights of Gondor. I need some advice on what to do with the four what I need to do for the rest. I have Rangers of Middle Earth and Faramir and Damrod Ambush Forbidden Pool set with three Ethelian Rangers. And loads of soldiers of Gondor and sixteen Numenorians. What would be a good addition to this force? Faramir is always a strong hero. If you've got Damrod, use Damrod and throw in some um Fighting Court are always good. <laughs> this is my yeah. My go-to thing for Gondor, Fountain Court. They're elite, aren't they? They're very, yeah. very strong. River Shield, Defense Seven. Yeah, all got spears. They're well worth it. And they got swords on their side as well, so they can faint. 
You're hungry again. Jeez. Ooh, I am due another meal. Uh, next question. So, yeah. Use, use the heroes you've got and use the warriors you've got. You, 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 Sounds you'll like be... you're on the right track. Yeah. Next one's from Edward Pratt. Hi, I'm Ed. I'm 13, but don't let my age suggest I'm terrible. I'd love to come down to your event to see if I can take one of you on. I have a 4,000 point army of Palace Guard. I think you mean Don't bring a 4,000 point army. Yeah. <laughs> Should be 500 points. 400 points, maybe? Only thing is, do you believe the Palace Guard are worth the points? Thanks from Ed. We discussed this in another video. I, I, don't, I don't think they're worth the points. I think you're paying unnecessarily for bodyguard. Yeah. And the fight six with Thranduil's around, if, if, if you're actually paying for that. You say that though, elves can still fail courage tests. You know, you, you still. Well, yeah. But you, let's say you roll sort of five or six times, you're gonna, you, you, might, hey, you, you might miss one. One should go, but on the whole. I know what you mean. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the higher courage you are, bodyguard becomes almost more expensive. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you're paying extra for courage and you're then yeah. paying extra for bodyguard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next question is from Mr. Dave Fredericks himself. Hello, and this yeah. is who we're doing the scouring of YouTube. So Dave, make sure you comment on your video. And your tree giants are appearing soon. Uh, Dave spoke to Forge World and they adamantly state that they will not be doing any models for the Hobbit range, let alone a Smaug. So that's a bit of a rumour killer. Fantastic. You heard it first. Maybe not, actually. <laughs> you might have heard it first on it the was, One Ring. Was, yeah. <laughs> but well, you heard it a second on the GBHL YouTube channel. My question this week, if you could choose to be either an awesome sculptor or an awesome painter, which one would you be? <sighs> uh, oh. I would want to be an awesome painter, so I could do it really quick. And then I would nominate you to be an awesome sculptor, and we could become a team. <laughs> and we could do Channel on Flame. <laughs> we, could come, we could come and work <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> uh, what would you prefer? I would prefer... To be an awesome painter. Yeah, I would prefer to be an awesome let's, painter. Let someone else make the models. <laughs> and I'll just paint them. And paint them. Yeah. I'd prefer to, and by awesome painter, I mean someone who can paint really well, very quickly. Yeah. That's the key thing. Uh, that guy, 513, favourite pre and post game beverages? Diet Coke and Diet Coke. Coke Zero and lattes. Yeah. Water, actually, water. Coke Zero is only like holidays, effectively. We nearly done. Nearly done with that question. Wow. The Cram Jam Triangle. Cram Jam Triangle. Cram Jam Triangle. Uh, hi guys, what's your favourite hero in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit? Nice Q&A, guys. Thanks. Your favourite hero. Legolas. Yep, and my favourite hero. The, in, the, in, the, in the game. Not yeah. The in, the ga in the game, mine is Aemon Knight and Pelennor. Yeah. It's good fun. Okay. Burner's Miniatures. Um, how does wheeling when charging exactly work? Now, wheeling makes me think that you're an old fantasy player. Wheeling's a fantasy mechanic. There well, is fantasy no... is very much about manoeuvring, isn't it, and deployment. Yeah. Um, there is no wheeling. You can just squiggle your way however you can move. Just draw a line. Like for... You could do it with a piece of string if you wanted to find out your exact movement, but you've literally... you can just do whatever the heck you want with your model. Yeah. Um, so, for example, when Orc 1 charges a Minas Tirith warrior, he may... Oh, you mean like wheeling around a model? Oh, like sliding. Like sliding, yeah. So when Orc 1 charges the Minas Tirith warrior, he may wheel the remaining distance around the Minas Tirith warrior, so he makes room for the next Orcs to go into charge, correct? Yes. Apparently so, I didn't know this until so long relatively recently. In your move distance, yeah. Another question, if the first Orc didn't wheel, may he wheel when the other Orc charges to make room? No, because that Orc's movement has finished, as you stay so here. So, yes. You got it all right. Sounds like you're all over it, buddy. Yeah, I'm wheeling there. Apologies. I'm, I honestly thought you were thinking of just the wheeling move in, in fantasy. That's what I, my brain goes to. Captain Wheel! Yeah. Ewa, Ewa, Ewa. Brandon Cooper next. Thanks again. A random question. Do you two play any consoles? No. PC Master Race. That's what I mean. Yeah, I've, I've bought a, I've, I, I saw, have done in the past. Yeah, I, I used to be an avid player of uh, PlayStation 2. And then when the 360 and PS3 came out, I jumped ship, went to 360. And now the Xbox One and PS4 have come out, I have thrown them both, well, sold them both all and just gone for, P for P yeah, PC. I've got a PS3, and do you know what I use it for? A DVD player. Very well, th this is what I found out I was doing with my Xbox. I wasn't playing games on it, I was just watching films on it. I was like, well, I've got a decent computer. Mm. And, you know, Netflix and Love Film have really taken off now, so... I prefer PCs for, for gaming. Yeah. On the whole. Obviously, there are some games that lend themselves to console, and have yeah. played consoles in the past, but not really now. I um I use a 360 controller for my PC. 
That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. That's cool. Okay. Uh, next question is from Joe Gamer Dude eighty four. First question, Jamie, what do you do for Lego? I am a duty manager at Legoland Discovery Centre in the Trafford Centre. Don't be shy. Jamie makes the Lego. Well, he closes his eyes. <laughs> I am a... Uh, Duplo brick appears in his hand. I am a... Uh, Duplo brick! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. As I've said before, I'm getting back into the hobby. But I'm a little torn. I want an evil model, and an evil army, and a good army to aid in teaching friends. And because I know some tournaments require you to bring both. For evil, I want eyes and guard because they are awesome, and I should be getting some needed source books and some troops soon. But I don't know which good force I should get. There are things I like about almost all of them. I love the heroes and lore of Rohan. I love the models. I love the models of Gondor and the fiefdoms, and their heroes and lore aren't bad either. The elves are just crazy good at almost everything in the game, and if you pick the right ones and the loaded qu oh. If you pick the right ones, and the dwarves just have tons of characters to them. Can you help a guy out? I know it's a loaded question. You've talked about possible, possibly doing a feat, a weak feature. I can't read here. You, do you want me to take over? Oof, no, I'm doing it. You've not got any Diet Coke. It's no, a problem. No. <laughs> For each source book, maybe you can go in more depth. But I'd like to start getting stuff soon, so I can help picking an army would be good. I wish I could narrow down the question, but honestly, just any thoughts you have about the good forces would be helpful at this point. Also, you said another guy was from Texas. Well, if you have another fan from Texas, because that's where I live as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. You made it. You made it. I'm not done yet, though. Well, well let's, let's answer that first bit of the question. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean for the, for the Q&A. Oh, for the Q&A. Well, good. I enjoyed the Q&A. And we're doing quite well. We're in an hour six minutes, which isn't bad. Um, the first bit of advice that both of us will give you is you've got to go for what you like the look of most. Yeah. The models that you like because then you're going to be more inclined to paint them and feel like you own them. And yet fluff is important as well, so things that you feel, feel an affinity to. Gondor and Fiefdoms is, I think if it, it sounded like you like them. Good, good, uh, good army to play with if, if you're trying to get someone into the game are things like a Rohan foot force with a few uh, cavalry and then regular orcs with a monster. There you get the full flavour of the game and... Both sides die relatively easy when they lose a fight. So there's things things are dying, things are happening. People like to see things die, basically. Yeah, people like to feel like things are happening, don't they? Yeah, you, you don't want to have two defence... I think we said this again in another video. You don't want two defence six walls that are strength three. They go in, OK, I need two dice and sixes. Oh, I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. And all that's happening is the lines just keep sort of bouncing against each other. You're not really getting the, the full flavour of SBG if you're doing that. So, yeah. So Good answer, Jamie. Low defence forces with... Cavalry to see how that works and a monster because they're big and fun to use. Next question is from Ramsey Issa. I love painting these to these videos, the longer the better. What were the first models you guys ever bought painted games with? For me, it was Dwarf Rangers. Really? Yeah. And you still got them? Nope. I threw them away. <laughs> threw them away? Yeah. Did you? That bad? That bad. Well, because when I first started, I picked them up and I picked up three colours. I picked up Chaos Black because I needed to base coat them and it was, this was a pot of paint, not a spray can. Yeah. Uh, so chaos black paint, um, bolt gun metal, which is uh, lead belcher. Yeah, lead belcher. That's it. Yeah. Or iron breaker. Yeah. One of them. One of the, the darker one. Um, lead belcher. Katachan green, which is a death world forest, and desert yellow, which I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's it's a really sort of murky yellow. It sounds like they looked amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this is my first time ever painting any sort of miniature. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is grey, this can go for a beard. <laughs> and then I had these dwarves with these shiny metal beards. <laughs> and like, I found them again, because like, I was thinking, oh, I want to do a dwarf army. Why are dwarf rangers? And picked them out and was like, but, but what, have I, what have I done? Too lazy just, to put them in debt all and strip them. Yeah, well, I, I was still sort of like 17 at the time. So you weren't allowed to play with debt all at yeah, 17. Yeah. <laughs> play with fire, but not debt all. I think my first model that I bought and painted was Halberad. And then some Rangers of the North and Rangers of Middle Earth. Oh, we're here. What? The last question. Wow. A guy called Randy Blood. Uh, he's Bill Fernie. Oh, yeah. Great painter. Uh, hey, boys. First and foremost, thank you so much for, my, for your compliments on my painting, James. I really appreciate that. Actually, the Bard unboxing inspired me to paint the model. Fantastic. Good stuff. 
I'm um, happy to accept that model if you'd like to send it to me because I know what a great painter you are. I've not done any <laughs> model appeals for ages. Send me models! <laughs> uh, I've been working on it ever since. My question is one of asking a favour. I see Dave posted a comment with respect to Forge World, but I think this is still worth a shot. I emailed Forge World about the weather top terrain piece and asked if they would be re releasing it. Short answer is that due to cost and lack of interest in it, most likely no. Would you guys tell your viewers that if they are interested in the piece to email Forge World telling them as much? Hopefully a flood of requests to Forge World will show them there is an interest to convince them to do another release. As always, the videos are excellent and have gotten me through a bunch of painting. Keep it up. Thank you very much for that and I'm pretty sure that if... Guys, if you would like the old Forge World weathertop piece to be remade, then all of you can contact Forge World. Uh, will I provide an email? No, you can go and find that one yourself. Um, so go on there guys and send an email if you want it to be remade. Although I know that there are a lot of sort of guides on how to build a good sort of Amon Soul. Have it's you seen the Forge World one? What was it like? It's big. Big? How big? Yeah. Oh, it's really big. It's quite, quite big for the game, yeah. yeah. It does look amazing. And obviously it's, I think it's either a single or two piece kit. So it doesn't break apart quite that easily. Well, okay. okay. Well. We've come to the, towards the end of this week's Speak Friend and Question. Yeah. And we've done very well this week. Thank you so much, all of you, for your questions. Remember the participation rule. If we answered your question, make sure, guys, that you get yourself back on here on this video. Comment below. You must comment below and leave your questions, guys. Ostrich. <laughs> Continue to like, share, subscribe, support your Hobbit hobby. And happy strategy battle gaming. <laughs>